Supreme on the track. You're now tuned in to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Supreme Decisions here, and this is the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Now, you know that we were going back to, at some point, get to the actual video podcast. This is one of the ones I'm using, and I'm using the Anchor, pretty much, uh, partnership with Riverside. And just seeing how everything goes and doing pretty much like a test episode and just Let's see where we go from here for the for this much uh, for this part of it because it allows me to have guests and different things of that nature and it's a little different and it offers me a little bit different control even the intro and you know some neat transitions and cheering and jump rolls and if I want to even throw in a joke yeah But what I'm actually here to do today is give you another podcast because, like I said, we're going to give you 25 before the end of the year. And today is actually Christmas Eve. So, you know, your boy got a little bit of work to put in. So now I want to give you something. I hope you're warm, got your hot cocoa today. I don't have any yak, but if you have some, drink up. But I want to talk about something. Um, Many people have actually contacted me in regards to the detailed discovery and where I talk about the um, going after the police officers, putting the police officers character on trial. This is one of those things where we're looking at or looking beyond the context of where we are actually at because weaponizing our defense means actually confronting our adversaries. Basically, like I said, looking the devil in the eye. Now, you heard me talk about the J. Cole response when he was asked, are there good police officers? His response, if you didn't know, was, I believe there are good people that are police officers. But when they are part of a system that was created or is inherently bad, how can they be good? That's one of the questions that we go into, and that's one of the things I even talk about. They're not trained to do the job properly or as written. So why should we just take them as they are portrayed instead of as they are? So here's here's where we're at. The Jiglio, where we're talking about going after their personnel records, um, basically understanding who it is your adversary is, the person that's bringing the complaint, because you have a right to challenge that person and their character because they are the one putting their character on trial whenever they're accusing you of something. And we talked about the prosecutor using their testimony to bring charges against you. So what we're doing now is I have to go back and I hate to do this, but it's one of those things where I had a friend. Well, I have a friend. He's still my friend, even though, you know, I talk shit about him all the time. I have a friend. He's an Atlanta police officer. I'm pretty sure many of you actually have heard me talk about the fact he and I had a conversation after the blue flu, after 2021. And he and I pretty much saw things very similar. Although, again, we are definitely facing it from different sides. Both of us have our inherent bias because, you know, our own experiences. But one of the things he relayed to me, which is one of the things I actually use against him, is the fact that said we're being punished for doing what we are trained to do. And that is one of the things that I'm going at today. Why we are challenging the police officer and their character because... They are doing what they're trained to do, yet we know they are not trained to do it properly, which is the actual issue. So I'm going to give you something because 
right now you have 30 cities across America that are kind of going away from traffic stops. Why is that? You know, because that seems to be the simple and the easy revenue game. That seems to be the easy target for, uh, what do you call that? What did, I, what did I say that that was the, oh, boosting quotas. You know, the things that everybody told me didn't exist. And then Trevor Noah did the show on it. And then all of a sudden I was over exaggerating what was already stated and what is known. Anyway. 30 cities at this point are going away from traffic um, traffic stops. Why? Because inherently, that is the second most dangerous type of activity for a police officer. Notice I said second. Number one is domestic. And generally, what makes a number one domestic, because you remember I told you, a cop's worst enemy is another cop. Who's number one on domestic violence? cops i also told you more shot more cops are shot and killed by cops than anyone else the number one you can act please verify it the number one means for a cop to be injured is a domestic call the number one domestic calls received by police are on police officers. Police officers are killed by police officers more often than not. Because remember we talked about, oh, well, blacks kill, blacks, white kill. Because we talked about crimes of proximity. We also talk about the, the love factors. You generally fall in love with the people you are around the most. Why? Because they know more about you. That's why people fall in love with friends, because that friend knows more about you. They're around you more. They're able to either manipulate or either sympathize with you because they're experiencing the same things. You are, are very similar. Well, a police officer has more access to a police officer than anyone else. So guess who their friends are? Guess who their lovers are? Guess who they're in close proximity to? But I'm not going to go dig too deep into that, but I just wanted to give you the idea because I want you to understand what it is that I'm coming from. And again, as the practice for this first episode on um, Riverside, I'm doing this because I want to give you context. Yes, this is going to be a short one. This one actually is going to be short. We're probably talking 25, 30 minutes. But what I want you to gather from this is why because even when we're doing these things and we're understanding the traffic citation we're understanding quote we because again i'm giving you a lot of information to kind of intake because i want you to understand the nature of the beast right i want you to understand that inherently this is not supposed to be done right as we see it it's supposed to be in a context of being completed as it is shown to us, not as it's actually done. So, when you talk about compliance, we've had many stories of, well, if he had just complied, he wouldn't have got shot. I think Charles Kingsley has a different conversation because police weren't even looking for him and he was laying on the ground flat with his hands out. And he was shot in the back by a South Carolina police officer. Philando Castile was following instructions, you know, complying. He told an officer he had a gun. He told the officer he had a gun license. Geronimo shot and killed him in front of his wife and child. Geronimo's partner asked him, why did you shoot? Because he was complying. You know, he hadn't even committed a crime at that point. His crime was telling the officer, yes, I am a licensed gun carrier. You know what, what those two had in common? In the utmost technical sense, those qualify as traffic stops. 
because Charles Kingsley was on the roadway looking for the same person the police was looking for because he was a caregiver. Philando Castile was going to the store. Sean Bell was out the night before his wedding, sitting in a car on the passenger side. So when we're talking about the compliance, that then brings us to Virginia police officer. What is his name? Because I, I have most of the stuff. The Fairfax PD police officer, Jonathan Freytick. Remember him? He was the police officer that had framed more than 400 people at traffic stops. You know, these people were complying. They were doing what they were told, and he still created criminals. How about down in Phoenix, Arizona? Our good buddy, Jerry Williams, who is no longer a sheriff down there, but is still eligible to become a police officer somewhere. She actually created a gang. She testified that they were the most violent. They were more violent than the Bloods and Crips, and including the Hells Angle. They, they're just as violent. Yet they didn't have any violence in their history, nor were they arrested for anything more than Jerry's political gang. Let's put let's keep, let's keep it easy. So even in those states of compliance, police created something that wasn't there, but we're still supposed to believe that they're good people. But I tend to go back. I, every time I hear something like that, I hear, because again, it's not in one place. It's not just in New York. It's not just in Phoenix. It's not just in Philadelphia. It's not just in California. It's not just in Georgia. It's not just in Wisconsin. I get calls all over the country the exact same story because they're doing what they're trained to do. I actually just gave you a story with Sergeant Inman. I'm going to give you video. Sergeant Inman did not have a warrant. She said as much. She also, everything that allowed her to go into that home without a warrant, she verbally announced that she did not have it. I'm going to say that one more time. But then she still went in. Her officer still blocked video. Her officer still committed crimes. Yet, we're supposed to trust them openly. That they're good people. Yet, they're not trained to do it properly. But they're doing what they are trained to do. Let that sink in. I want Because I, I give you that. I, I constantly repeat that. Because... Not only did it leave an impression on me when he said it to me, but I wanted to impress upon you the context because, again, I'm not talking about one police department. I'm not talking about one police officer. I'm talking about officers across the country doing the exact same thing because they're doing what they are trained to do because the system itself is inherently bad. We didn't need J. Cole to say that. However, we needed to hear J. Cole say that. But I want you to understand, because we also have the Chicago police sergeant, Ronald Watts. He framed 200 plus people. Remember I, remember I talked about Eddie T. Johnson? Eddie T. Johnson even spoke about the culture that they have that allowed for this type of behavior in Chicago. What about the Baltimore actual police task force that was responsible for framing over 400 people, robbing 400 plus people? These were nine officers. They were doing what they were trained to do. So why should we not challenge everything someone said because here's the thing that trips me out they'll the same people that'll tell you just comply if a random person said a absolute lie on them they would lose their mind but if a police officer lies on them oh it was just a mistake because even down in polk county florida he was red he vilifies people 
The sheriff down there vilifies these people prior to conviction, just on arrest. When it comes to find out these people actually have been exonerated from the actual charge that they've been arrested for, that he vilified them for, he says nothing, which means his integrity is shit. His officers were caught. Three officers were caught. Three of his officers, three people he supervised were caught stealing. Stealing. Three of his officers that he supervised were caught stealing. It was an honest mistake. They just, they merely misplaced it. They merely spent it on themselves unwittingly because they're not that smart. He used the fact that they don't hire intelligent people to the advantage of allowing stupidity to float in his, you know what, to float under his chain of command. These are his people. I'm going to say, these are his people. These are the people that he trained. These are the people that he's responsible for. He allowed them to be called stupid to excuse their behavior. But we're supposed to just trust them and comply because they're wearing a uniform. Because they're supposed to have integrity, yet his is shit. Because when someone else does it, they're the worst people in the world. When his officers do the exact same thing, mm, they're too stupid to actually do it the right way anyway. And it's just an honest mistake because they can't do it right. I think there was this movie called Life and they had this young man called Can't Get Right. Would you trust Can't Get Right with your children? Would you trust that Can't Get Right put together a police report on you. But that's what they're asking me to do in Polk County. They're asking me to trust can't get right. Because can't get right is doing what he's trained to do. But he's doing what every officer around this country is doing. Don't worry about it. I'm going to even give you a couple of dramatic pauses here. I'm going to give you a couple because... Of, you deserve a couple. You deserve a few. You deserve what it is I'm trained to do. You get an opportunity to get internal affairs report. Because you remember this dude named, I believe his name was Daniel Shavers. Daniel Shavers was denied from the police department, not once, not twice, but three times. He was then hired, and then he gave commands to someone who he wasn't looking for to begin with, that no human being could perform. No human being could perform. Even a contortionist couldn't do what he was asking this young man to do before he murdered him. He was denied being part of the police force three times. They then hire him. He then give commands that no one can follow, and then he murders someone who had nothing to do with his entire call. He was doing what he was trained to do because we're supposed to trust him. We're not supposed to question that behavior. We're not supposed to question why did they deny him three times. But this man is the one that's writing reports on why he's having an encounter with you. Would you trust can't get right? But you're asking me to. New Albany police officer Adam Snyder planted drugs on innocent people. I'm going to say that one more New Albany police officer Adam Schneider planted drugs on innocent people. But again, he's doing that at traffic stops and we're supposed to trust him because he's wearing a badge. Why are you planting drugs if these people are innocent? If you don't have quotas. Sometimes when I say these things, 
it sounds crazy. I get it. I get it. Because even, even sometimes when I hear it, it sounds crazy to me. Because I don't live in the world of should. Why would the police even do that? Why would police officers plant drugs on people? If they're good people, why are good people planting drugs on people trying to make them criminals? Why would a police sergeant actually barge in someone's house without a warrant after saying, I don't have a warrant? I'm not even here for an emergency. I'm here for something to happen way earlier. But I'm all, I'm just coming to your house at 4 a.m. And you're supposed to comply completely without question, even though I don't have the necessary things that allow me to do what I'm doing. Because he's doing, just like Sergeant Inman in Richmond County, she's doing what she's trained to do. Officer Zachary Wester planted drugs on drivers, you know, at traffic stops. He was actually convicted. He's doing 10 years for planting drugs on multiple drivers. Kyle Erickson and Elmer Pastron. Good God. They played don't believe what you're looking at defense when they were caught by their own body cam planting drugs on drivers. You know, have you noticed a pattern yet? Because they're doing what they're trained to do. Did you still tell me that I should comply with these people? Because the people that complied with these people had drugs planted on them. The people that complied with Jerry Williams had drugs planted on them and stated that they were gang members. They were violent gang members. And I, I hate to go back to this, but what happens is now you get a call. The sheet that comes up for these police officers going to this call is this person has a propensity for violence. This person is in a gang. So now the officer who is eager, they're eager to please, is now have a heightened sense to actually come with a weapon. But it's all based on a lie by a police officer. But I'm not supposed to challenge that because they're the good guy. They're good people. That's part of a bad system. And they're doing what they're trained to do. Officer Jeffrey Mello shot Richard Gibbs because his partner yelled gun and then admitted to not seeing the gun, then planted one on him. No, I'm going to say that one more time because I know you did not catch that. Officer Jeffrey Mello shot Richard Gibbs. Because his partner, yeah, gun. You remember the stock lanes we talked about? He has a gun. His partner shoots him. Then says, I didn't even see a gun. But wait, I have an extra one to plant on him. Because he's a good person. Or is it because he's doing <laughs> what he's trained to do? Detective Camilo Antonillo. He was part of a chain of police brutality complaints. He stole cash during searches and on video, he remained on the street. Detective Camilo Antonillo committed acts of police brutality. He stole cash and performed illegal searches on video. He remained on the street. Remember I talked about the, old, the police unions, right? Remember, remember I said something about them? They keep bad cops on the street. Also remember when I talked about a bad cop is a good cop's worst nightmare? Because they're doing what they're trained to do. Now I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you one because I thought it was hilarious because again, I love to have conversations when people come up to me and ask me, hey, what do you do? 
What type of work do you do? And I was like, I'm supporting decisions. And they were like, oh, I saw one of your videos. Why would you say that about cops? I had a young lady. I was sitting down having coffee in Hotel de Norte. Actually, it's a very nice coffee shop for those that actually want to check it out. It is worth the ride. It is worth the wait. It is actually less expensive than Starbucks. And I was able to get a discount. I appreciate that. But there was a young lady. She actually, um, she's holding the Bible. This is, I actually love these people. She's holding the Bible and we're having a conversation. And she goes, well, I don't think you should do some of the things. Maybe you should say it's a little softer, a little different. Because, you know, police officers, but not all police officers are bad. And I said, but they're part of a system that is horrible. And the system itself is bad. So if they're part of that bad system, wouldn't that make them bad? doesn't make them a bad person, but it does make them a co-conspirator. And she goes, well, I don't think you should do that and teach people how to go after these people because going after someone is wrong. You know, God won't bless you that way. And I smiled and I said, I'm glad you brought that up because God also said, spare the rod, spoil the child. No one is above accountability. So you're asking me to spare the rod against someone who should be accountable that volunteered for the position that they're in of servitude and choosing not to serve. And she got quiet because she never thought of it that way. But then when you follow me, that's the whole purpose of my content is to actually change here. I'm not going after your heart. I don't want you to love me. I don't give a shit if you do or not. I'm going for here. Because it's not the spoon that bend, it's your mind. I'm going for here, your decision-making ability. I want you to understand, I'm going to actually give you bullets for the chamber. I'm giving you weapons so you can weaponize your protection. When I use weaponize your defense, it's the understanding, the relay of weaponizing your protection. Somebody asked me the other day when we were having a conversation about her case. And I told her, I said, well, you know, I gave her the good cop speech. And I talked about my buddy John, because I love John. John is John is a miracle to me because he's he's a better man than I would ever be. And I've told him this a thousand times because there's no way in the hell I could be going to a traffic stop and not be shot once, but twice. And I still don't grab my gun in Georgia when I go for a traffic stop. And I'm still just as pleasant to, to everyone, even when they're very disrespectful to me. I, I get it. You know, he's he's an incredible dude. And I appreciate him. And there's probably a lot of other people that appreciate him, too. But John, John is different. But John also wants to be looked at as different. But here's the thing. When we talked about him riding by himself. The one thing he talked about was the fact that even if he's in the shootout, he makes a call because that's what he's trained to do. But he knows no other cops are coming to help him. His brothers in blue aren't coming to help him. His brothers in blue aren't coming to save him because he's a person that will reprimand those because he understands your behavior is a reflection on me. And if I continue to allow you to behave in a manner, your, your behavior puts me in danger. And I love me more than I love you. But they don't understand the trickle down effect because if your behavior protects you, it also protects me. My behavior protects not only me, but it protects you because it changes how people look at you. Because even though 
we ride separately. I still represent the blue. I still represent you. But when you ask a police officer, but am I my brother's keeper? They don't allow reprimand from one of their own. Because they didn't get into policing for servitude. We don't look, and I, I say this often. When we look at a police officer, we don't say, oh my God, I just knew this guy was going to be a cop. Because if we say, oh my God, I, I figured it's not a surprise who we look at as police officers. Oh yeah. Nobody liked her in high school. Yeah, he used to get beat up all the time. Those are the people we look at. It. Yeah, he's a cop. We don't ever say, oh, hey, he, he was smart as hell in school. No, we don't ever say that about any of the people that we didn't like or got beat up by or beat up. But these are the people we're looking at as police officers. Because there are very, actually, there are very few people that I can actually say, you know what, actually, he is pretty, pretty. If I think they're intelligent, my first one, why did you become a cop? I have a young, I have a friend of mine. Her, her thing, I'm going to want to be an FBI agent. Okay, great. She said, I have to be a police officer for two years. I was like, Ugh, how that's going to work out? They were like, yeah, I probably won't be in the field. I was like, that makes sense because you're intelligent. You're asking questions. That, that makes sense. You don't put someone to ask questions in the field because asking questions in the field, that's a problem. We're only sending the tech dogs out into the field that's going to escalate situations. You know, the opposite of what Officer Dingle did or talked about. Police officers are professional, but every time we talk about it, we don't see professionalism. We see escalation instead of de-escalation because then it becomes they're doing what they're trained to do, which is create crime instead of actually fighting it or deterring it. That's why you don't see community policing, because back in the day, back in my great grandparents day, community policing was a thing. Because good, bad or indifferent, everybody knew who the cops were in their neighborhood. They also knew who the cops were in their neighborhood. Even when we talked about, oh, we're only going to have people from this area police this area. Nope. Because that'll actually stop the ability for them to do the things they're doing. You know, the things they are trained to do. New York Sergeant Rainer Maddow and Officer Tiana Alexander are on video planting drugs on a man prior to arresting him for what? Possession. LAPD officer Galaxio put drugs in the wallet of Ronald Shields. Now, here's, here's a tee. I think all of us has watched this video at least a thousand times. Because whenever I saw that, I was like, hold on, did he put the drugs in the wallet and then say he had drugs in his wallet? Like, and it's, it's, I mean, it's so plain because he does it, it's almost instantaneous. He put, you see it in his hand, you see him open the wallet and pull it in, and then you see him immediately pull it out and say, hey, I found drugs in your wallet. You mean the drugs you just put in there, literally on video? Because he was doing what he was trained to do. But here's the great part. The DA has to then vacate convictions and even cases that this man has or this officer has because he's caught. There's evidence. And the DA then is not going to accept the liability of putting a known liar on the stand because then it becomes an easy conviction for malicious prosecution. See the lies you've been told? Absolutely. But here's, here's where at. Officer Omar Abdullah was caught planting fake drugs on people. Now I'm going to give you two sides to this one. Because not only was he planting drugs on people, they were fake. But see, here's, here's what a great part is. Because I always tell people to challenge everything. That includes the drugs. Because if you're charging me with drugs, 
you then have to tell me how much drugs I'm being charged with. And, you know, I got to love this. Got to love this. Forgot to turn my phone off in the middle of a show. This is how I get out. You know, I just do shows when I feel them. But I want you to understand this. That it completely threw me off. Anyway, this officer, Abdullah, was caught planting fake drugs. Now, when you're challenging the actual drugs themselves, you then have to go and talk about the actual amount and quality and also quality of these drugs. Good God, man. So when you're talking about the amount that's tested, what goes on in the testing, and also the X mark of it, because that has to verify and coincide with their story. Because if you don't have actual drugs, they can't charge you with actual drugs. Because remember, I always talk about the word intent. If you don't have drugs, there is no intent to distribute drugs. And if it's fake drugs, they have to prove that you had knowledge that the drugs were fake and you had the intention to distribute them or do something else that is unlawful with them. Because proving what's on someone's mind, I've met many of psychics. I've had many of girlfriends and none of them have been able to do it yet. At least not very successfully. Once or twice is cool, you know, because it's the easy. Oh, you want a sex? Absolutely. But that's pretty much the easy because that's... Anyway, the challenging of everything. But the context is he's doing what he's trained to do by planting drugs at all on people. Okay. Actually, most of this here, I'm actually, I actually wrote a conclusive statement. Let me go ahead and read that for you. They're out in the open, but they operate in secrecy. Because we, you know, we talk about the flag, the desecrated flags, you know, because one of the signs of a gang. But they have the blue wall. The blue wall of silence. You know, no snitching. And as the Constitution of Georgia states, the government derives directly from the people and we give them their power. But I'm going to tell you, it's not how most of us think. It. Nah. Because the way we give the police officers their power is not by committing crimes. It's by accepting everything they say, not questioning them, not challenging them, not forcing them to do their job properly, and then going to court and not fighting back. We're telling them everything they're doing is A-OK. -okay. So when we're talking about this and we're understanding the context, you have to believe and understand they're doing what they're trained to do. When they're beating on you, they're doing what they're trained to do. When they're shooting you without recourse, without thought, they're doing what they're trained to do. When they are not de-escalating a situation, yet they're escalating a situation, they're doing what they're trained to do. Now it's up to you to actually make them do it the way it should be done. Now, I thank you guys. I'm going to be doing more. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Supreme, out.